You're listening to Kapow, the pop culture podcast. Comics, television, movies, and more. If it impacts fan culture, we have something to say about it. And now, your hosts, Jordan, Cliff, and Seth. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kapow the Pop Culture Podcast. It's nice to see you. My name is Jordan Lowe. I'm Cliff Barnes. I, I should say, and I'm Cliff Barnes. That's now's your chance. I can do it tonight because there's no Seth. I think we have, uh, what, what have we done? We've done this once before. Just to make, I think the two of us on here and probably spit out an episode or two. So a little different dynamic. We'll try to muddle through without the poo ball. So how are you doing? <laughs> I am above water. That's the important thing. Yes. Marietta is dealing with some flooding this week and the weekend. Luckily it avoided my shop on third street, but there's a lot of other stores that Weren't so lucky. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is the biggest flood we've had in in, in just about twenty years, um, at least since January of two thousand five. Uh, we had a we had a big one in September two thousand four. Jordan and I were just talking about it, uh, before we started recording here, and um, and it, it hit us again in two thousand January two thousand five. Uh, was almost as bad. So. So we're, we're there are, the Ohio River is about, I think it crested about 40, 40 feet and 40.5 or, or somewhere around that. Uh, 2004, I think, was about 45 feet, if I remember correctly. So not as bad, but still pretty devastating um, to anybody that get, got hit by it. So, Which sucks. So, lovely historic <laughs> city, but... That is one issue we <laughs> periodically yeah. have to deal with. Yeah, so uh, Marietta sits at the uh, where where two rivers come together, and uh, certainly have our fair share of creeks and and such. Uh, on top of that, that kind of run through it, and and so well, uh, every once in a while these these things happen. But but you know, I, I it's been like. 200 years or 230 years or whatever, you know, downtown Marietta is still standing. So one more, I guess, isn't going to take it out quite yet. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. We've had <laughs> yeah. eclipses. We're going to have yes. eclipses. And I feel like it's not just an <laughs> earthquake today in New mm. York. Yeah. So, but never fail. We're here. Might as well record an episode and get something out there. And uh, I don't know. We haven't done very many regular episodes here lately. We've been traveling around and and uh, we've been doing movies and stuff. So, so last weekend I mentioned uh, our last episode. I was getting ready to head on over to the the Great Ohio Toy Show. And uh, last weekend went Saturday, day before Easter. Uh, Militia and I went over to that uh, again. I've talked about it before, but this is the one of the biggest shows in the country. It takes over the entire Greene County fairgrounds, all seven buildings, over 700 tables. Um, so much fun. I have such a good time at these toy shows. And this this one is just so massive. Um, Did you see more than your first trip there or less? I, I think I saw less. <laughs> um, simply because there were so many more people. It was a massive influx of people. I mean, there were a lot of people there last last fall when we went. Um, this year, like we, it it was the weather was bad. It was raining in the morning. We had to stand out in this huge line to even pay the admission to get into the damn thing. We had to park r- even further away than we did last time. And uh, actually parked over um, uh, in an, a, not even at the fairgrounds, but like there's a church it would be the closest thing to the fairgrounds. And we had to park at this church lot because the fairgrounds were completely full. And this, we got there at 9 a.m. when it opened. So um, I'm, I'm becoming more and more of a proponent of 
just go on Sundays. Any 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 event like this. Yeah. Forget Saturday. Saturdays are be- for anything I've gone to lately. Saturdays have become just too too much. I would normally absolutely agree. The only problem is this was a one day event. Oh, it is? okay. <laughs> it's that a one day. And, and the and Sunday was Easter Sunday, so obviously um, you would have to place to yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> So just me and the bunny. Um, <laughs> yeah, it it was uh, it, it was a bit overcrowded, especially in the morning. They had let there was an they had let like early birders in who who I think they paid maybe like twice the admission to go in at an hour early or whatever. Um, which didn't help my situation, but but anyways, yeah, we got in there and. Um, a lot of the same vendors I, I noticed uh, from last fall, which was fine because they're all great. Um, the selection is it, it, it's it's breath. I mean, overwhelming. Like there's just so much stuff I can't folk. I have trouble focusing on anything because it's just every inch of space is just something awesome that you want to look at um, and and touch. I don't and know feel. how you came home. I don't know how you came home without that Archie Bunker baby doll. I know, seriously, man. <laughs> Archie Archie Bunker's grandson. <laughs> so, and the whole place is full of weird stuff like that. I mean, it's just not the... I would say there's more weird stuff or more very rare stuff than there is what you would expect. You know, just Star Wars and, and He-Man and stuff Everything everybody had. The, I mean, it's wild. And, uh, so anyways, yeah, ma- massive amount of people we had, it, it was hard to even get near the vendor tables to actually stop and look and interact with the person, um, at the table, which was frustrating to me. Uh, I was having a great time, but I was just like, man, if there were just less people here, I would be having the best time. <laughs> now, did you so, get to meet your YouTube celebrities you were looking for? I, I definitely did. Um, nice. and more and more because I do, um, in the last, especially in the last year or so, uh, we've talked about and kid around about, you know, pixel Dan, I met him a couple times at PowerCon and stuff. Um, but at this event, uh, pixel Dan was there. He was working a booth, uh, for somebody. And then, uh, just walking around, um, there's a huge channel with a huge following YouTube channel. Uh, the channel is called Froggy Flips. The guy's name is Anthony. Um, the last couple of years, he 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 lit, He's out in Indiana. He literally was just wearing a started his channel by wearing a GoPro, going to yard sales. wasn't a huge collector. Just kind of fell, you know, started doing it more and more and more. And his channel channel blew up. People watching him find this stuff. And then of course it it you know it's developed and evolved and. To where he has this massive collection. He's selling stuff now. Has his own website. But he's very, very popular. Uh, our, our buddy Russ, um, him and I both watch that channel and talk about it all the time. So I I had confirmation that uh, from their Facebook page that he was going to be at the show. And I'd never met him. So we were excited about that. Hoping we could run into him. And, and we did actually very early on in the morning, we caught him not even in a building. He was coming out of a building as we were, I think, trying to go in that building. And, and anyways, a uh, few people were stopping him. So we stopped and said, hi, we took a little, uh, took a selfie. Um, my wife and I with him and, and he was super nice guy. So we met him. We saw, um, Ed from Ed's retro geek out channel. Um, he was walking around with, um, justice Curry um, another YouTuber. So they they were all over the place. Um, but they were all super nice filming content, interacting with, with viewers and, and toy fans and stuff. Um, talked to pixel Dan for a little bit. Um, bought his book. I put a, made a TikTok and, and, uh, last week and, and showed, uh, showed the book here. It's the, uh, the Toys of Mas- He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. It's 752 pages, I think. Um, and, and he was nice enough. He he signed it for me on the inside cover. And we had a big, long conversation. And uh, I, I basically, I told him, I was like, I was like, man, I've looked at that book three times. Today's, 
today is going to be the day that I, I finally pull the trigger. So he was super excited, of course. And, and then you had to carry it around that big I, monster I, hardcover. I did. I waited towards the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not, that thing weighs 20 pounds. I'm not getting You got Archie Bunker's up. grandkid under one arm and yeah. a 700 page hardcover. E- exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so. No, I was, I was pretty happy. I didn't come home with the big haul, but I, I, I pretty much got what I was I was looking for. Um, Star Wars wise, I'm still working on that on that vintage collection, and I'm kind of to the point where things are what I don't have are things that are very expensive. So, but one of those things was I I, I didn't have a Max Rebo band from Return of the Jedi, the three you know nice Snoodles and Max Rebo, and um, oh gosh, whatever the other guy's uh, the flute player, whatever his name is. Um, that I'll think of as soon as we stop this, but, um, I, I, I was having trouble finding, like, I didn't want, I wanted it loose. I wanted a loose one, not in a box and droopy McCool. That's his name. Um, just came up in, in my brain, but I wanted, um, to get that, uh, to kind of display with the job of the hut playset that I have never had it as a kid. Um, so I was like, that would be awesome. I don't want it in a box. Just I want to be able to display it, the figures themselves. So I found one actually at a at a um, at a booth uh, for a blast blast from the past toys or something like that. I bought a bunch of stuff off off of him last year. I bought that that uh, Ramba Ewok, um, the last figure I needed. That's I bought it off the same guy. So he had one loose set and he had uh, complete. And then he had um, some loose individual of the figures priced. But Max Rebo didn't have the the keyboard, the brown piano keyboard thing. So anyways, I looked at it. I was like, it was like, he had a mark like $210. I was like, man, I don't want to pay $210. I'm going to look around a little bit. So I did, I looked around um, pretty much all the other buildings and did not find one that was not in a box. And I was like, well, I told Alicia, I was like, I'm just going to, I don't want to pay that much for it, but I'm going to go, if I have to pay that much, I will. Um, but maybe he'll give me a deal or something. So I went to go, went back to the table and the damn thing was gone. And I was like, man, did you sell that? And he goes, yeah, he goes, I'm sorry. He's like, that's the way it works. Sometimes I was like, eh, it's my fault for waiting too long. So, um, what I ended up doing was uh, he had some nice individual loose figures. They were priced very reasonably. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get the figures. That'll give me a start. I can work on the accessories and stuff later. So I bought those and I ended up buying, um, the, the Leia, um, bounty hunter, uh, Boosh or Bausch, how, however you say it. Um, complete figure because I did not have that had always had it as a kid but didn't have it anymore so I wanted that found a really nice one he gave me a deal on all of it um, really good price on on the whole thing threw in a, a indoor poncho for for my Leia figure so I'm working on that too but anyways uh, <laughs> that's very uninteresting if you're not into toys um, anyways I was like well you know Columbus Vintage Toys had their booth had a Max Rebo no accessories, but it had the figures and Max w- had the piano. But I w- had went and looked at it before this and the Max Rebo figure, the head was broken, like snapped off. And I was like, so I, I, I was like, well, I'm not buying that. So anyway, I, I had the thought, I thought, well, what? maybe he'll sell the, the piano part, the keyboard part um, separately since the figures broke. So I went over and I was like, hey man, you know, and I talked to them and they acted like they didn't know the head was broken. Maybe they didn't. Maybe somebody had walked over there and broke the damn thing or knocked it off the shelf and broke it and, you know, put it back or whatever. I don't know. But anyways, they, they talked for a minute and he, he was like, yeah, we'll get, if, if you want it, we'll sell it. I was like, well, give me a price. And he's like 50 bucks. So I was like, I don't know if I want to pay $50 for it. Cause I'm cheap. So I hopped on eBay real quick. Look, you know, looked it up looked under sold items to see how much it eh, they had sold for lately. And they were all 50 to $60. So I was like, fine. So I got everything but the microphones um, right now, but I think I'm just going to 
just going to purchase those. Um, go ahead and do it to complete the set. So, but the figures are, they look so cool. They were great shape and the piano was perfect. So it, it worked out in the end. I, I paid less money than I would have for the 210, of course, but, but I do still have to get a couple of accessories. So, so yeah, that's kind of, kind of what I came home with, but, but man, it, it was super fun. I mean, it's a great atmosphere, even with that many people. Um, I kind of got, you ever been to one of those shows where you can tell the half the people are just kind of there. They don't know anything about comics or toys or yeah, They just saw something was happening and were like, yeah, let's go check. That yeah. Out. This is happening in my town. We need something to do. And it costs $5 to get in basically. So there were a ton of those people that just the guy ahead of me in line to meet Peter Cullen who didn't have money or yeah. anything to get signed and just wanted to hang out and talk. <laughs> right. Exactly. It was very much a, a whole, uh, a whole crowd of those people. And they, they like weren't even looking at the stuff. They were, they would just stop and just congregate right in the middle aisles, which was very aggravating. So I could have done without that, but, but man, it's such a great show. And, and it really like, it impresses me every time. Just the, the amazing selection you can find bootlegs foreign bootlegs um you know i, I saw uh the uh, the metal moldings i saw the uh the the metal plates they used to paint like motu figures and stuff you know way back in the day the originals i don't even know how you get your hands on that stuff but but somehow these guys do and uh yeah just amazing selection things everything from Stuff from the 50s I saw on up. Um, tons of eight, 70s, 80s, and 90s toys. Everything, every line you could ever imagine. I actually saw something I had not seen. And since I was a, a little kid, like, I had forgot they existed. I'm checking out a booth, walking along, just, you know, browsing around. And I look down and I see on card... These little, they were bath toys for little kids. And they were called Lil Loggers. L-I-L Loggers. And they were like lumberjacks. And then they spit water out of their mouth? Yes! <laughs> yes! I had those. I had one too. <laughs> They're little squeezy, like had squeezy bodies. That, they had a little yeah, yeah. animal that, that squeezed. You know, every, every the figures did. Like they had a soft head. And then they yeah. had a, a, like a little animal buddy too that went along with them. So it was like yeah, a two, f- like a like a beaver. Yeah, it was yes, totally. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it had the little, it was a little foam log that had two little circles cut out for the figures to write in. So it was like you know they were like a log. It was like Splash Mountain, you know, it was a log flume like ride. So I saw somebody have some of those on card and I was just like, I mean, you want to talk about a nostalgia trip. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I completely forgot those ever existed. So I got to go home and take a bat. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It was amazing. So um, they, I think he had $75 on him. I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, are you kidding me? But holy cow, talk about something that, you know, nobody... Okay. I, I thought for sure nobody would remember, but apparently I'm wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's amazing little toys. And, and I was just like, oh my gosh, this show has everything. That's <laughs> so twice a year. They do it twi- twice a year. They do it. Um, they do it. Uh, I think in o- the third week of October, maybe um, right around Halloween. And then they do it or right before Halloween. And then they do it, yeah, again, like the March, April-ish again. Uh, I think it's the end of March typically. But, but yeah, uh, twice a year he's had it. I don't It's not a very old show. I mean, he just started a few years ago. The guy that runs it has, in Xenia, Ohio, he has a retro toy shop. It's called like Route 68 Toys or something to that effect. And it's a really neat shop. I've seen, I've watched a ton of videos, people go, going in there and shopping and all the crap he's got. And I saw him, I saw um, a few other people that, channels I watch that aren't big, huge channels outside of, you know, maybe toy collectors, that type of thing. But, but man, everybody's just so friendly and happy to be there. I, uh, I drag my wife in there and then I, uh, she says she has a good time looking at all the stuff. 
Um, I don't know. I think she mostly goes for me, but, but man, I, I just love it. It's, it's amazing. And it's hard to go to a show of that caliber and then go to a small, you know, local or whatever show. And it's just like, you know, which is still great. It still scratches a niche, but it's just like, oh my gosh, you just, Xenia is so amazing. So, and I'm sure you could go twice a year and not, yeah, you know, no, no. The tables won't have the same stuff. Like it, it'll be all right. new inventory, of, you know. Yeah, the amount of cash people I see laying down is just astounding. You know, we're we're not talking about toys that we're paying seventy five cents for. They're they're laying down a a grand here, a couple grand there. I mean, these guys are bit. A lot of them are big collectors, and they are deep into it. You know, <laughs> they're making trades and stuff. It, it's amazing. But that's got to be more satisfying than eBay or Craigslist or whatever, like actually being able to go look at it and talk to the people. And... I think that's part of the appeal. I really do. And, and, you know, comics, I think, are kind of the same way. Like, I'd much rather co- go to a show, maybe overpay a little bit, but have an experience out of it, know where I got it or who it came from, at least before it, it, it touched my hands, uh, rather than just, yeah, just a blind purchase on- online sometimes, so... Pretty neat. I, I highly recommend it to anybody. If you're in, you know, people come from all over, but if you're in Ohio, even like us on the way on the other side of the state, it, it's a two hour and 45 minute drive for me. Um, but if you're in Indiana or Kentucky or Cincinnati or wh- wherever, man, it, it, if you like retro toys, man, this is the place. <laughs> My next show will be Space in Columbus at the end of April. Small Press and Alternative Comics Expo. We got a table for SoPro Comics up there. We, we did that show a long time ago when we were first starting out. Mm-hmm. It was a, a lot of the people are literally, you know, it's just Xerox copies that, you know, <laughs> hold and half and staple. Like, it is super indie. It is super, like, do-it-yourself. Like it's it's a cool vibe for a show, and we had done it before we were even Sopro Comics, and we just hadn't gotten back to it in a while. Uh, so I yeah. wanted I wanted to go this year because we haven't yes I haven't done it in a while. So I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to that and seeing all the you know the local, the people of the Columbus and the Ohio area. It's a, it's a good networking show. You know, talk to other yeah. creators and because we're not that to. far from Columbus. I mean, really. I mean, I understand. We're it's a couple hours, but I mean, in the big picture, we're not that far from Columbus. So, yeah, that's cool. I like it. Uh, revisiting? Are you are you doing anything new, in particular for that show, like you do for Mothman or? Uh, Insecticide number four should be done. We should have time to the Kickstarter for that one just ended, and we should have time to. As long as the printer <laughs> gets it back to us in a timely <laughs> manner, we should be able to debut that thing. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's cool. I um, I don't have any other uh, any other shows I, I, right on the horizon at the moment. Um, I, I, there are a lot of those toy shows happening in in our general area. I know Marysville is uh, they have one coming up. Uh, I think Canton and uh, Akron was maybe this weekend. So they're out there. Um, they're happening, and uh, if you're ignoring it, I feel like you're missing out. Like we, I, I, I was never a big show guy. I went to you know I'd go to the, your local show here and and one or you know two or in the immediate area. In this last couple of years, as we've started going and and doing more of this stuff, it's been a lot of fun. I've got a lot of cool stuff now. <laughs> yeah, it's never been easier to just point and click something from your computer and have it shipped to your house. Like, I, yeah, I've yeah, it's never been easier to find stuff or to fill a hole in a collection. But I, I, I just there's I've always felt something impersonal about that. Like, yeah. if I if I have a want list of books, you know, it's it's a it's better for me. I enjoy it more. You know, I when I stumble upon them or I go track it's, them down somewhere. Yeah, it's the hunt. That's why we love collecting. It's the hunt of the whole deal. And yeah, that's half the fun. Not just having it. it it's it's finding it. You know, seeking it out. I love it. 
and like you said, then that attaches a memory to it of you know something you you did, some place you went, and who you were with, and all that, all that yeah. good stuff. Experiences. <laughs> so yeah, all right. lots of exciting things happening here. Save Martha, puny god. I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. I'm Batman. Kneel before the sun. Under roof. Said it yourself, bitch. We're the guardians of the galaxy. So what's it gonna be, huh? Long, sullen silence, or mean comment? Go on. You got me in a box here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this episode will just be kind of catching up on a few things. Uh, I wanted to start with movies. We didn't get to talk about the Oscars, which feels mm. like it was Forever a year ago. ago. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mainly, I just wanted to, because we complain, not a lot. We're not a complainy type show. We mm-hmm. we try to see the positive in things. But uh, Seth and I especially have complained about award shows you know in the recent past and how you know when when they're not good but this year's oscars was really good so i wanted to i wanted to make sure i pointed out that they they fixed a lot of things that we complain about i'm not saying we had an impact on it i don't know there's no there's no real way to know that (laughs) um but it was really good uh jimmy kimmel was the host Mm -hmm. and he didn't make it all about himself at what he wasn't the you know he did a little monologue but he he didn't try to you know, take over the whole proceeding. So a couple funny bits they did. You probably saw the John Cena. Mm-hmm. They, they made a joke about it. It was, the, it was the, whatever, the anniversary of the streaker, the famous streaker at the Oscars in the seventies. And they were going to get John Cena to do it again, but he was, he was shy. So like that, and it was actually a funny bit. So yeah. like so many of the comedy bits that these shows just ball or they're just, the people aren't, don't seem real game to even do them. The it's banter a, is just yeah. not good. It's a struggle for them to to get through yeah. it. Yeah, but yeah, but this year's was good, and they also, I don't, they didn't play anybody off. Like sometimes the music would kick up, but I hate. I I want to hear what the people had to say. Let them talk. But you know, <laughs> there wasn't any egregious, uh, you know, shortening of the speeches, and they they actually like showed clips and talked about. The performances they had yeah. five former winners come out and introduce each person and say, "Oh, and this actor in this role, you know, did a great, you know, they, they gave him a little pat on the back." It was like, "Yeah, I want to see that celebrated." Right. You know, they, so right. often they put so much extraneous stuff, and like, and here's the nominees, and there's the winner. And like, you don't wait. What even movie were they nominated for? So like, <laughs> they slowed down a little bit and like, you know. Gave everyone a moment, yeah. You know, whether you whether you won or lost, so it was it was a really well produced Oscars this year. Although there weren't a ton of surprises, uh, so just real quick, best original screenplay went to Anatomy of a Fall, a foreign film. Best adapted screenplay to American Fiction. Best international film, The Zone of Interest, which I saw just came out on HBO Max. Mm. Uh, best animated film, The Boy and the Heron, the mm-hmm. Japanese film from Miyazaki. Best original song, no surprise, What Was I Made For from Barbie Eilish. And best visual effects, Godzilla Minus One. A lot of people psyched about that. But yeah. People love that Godzilla movie. Best supporting actress, Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. And then everything else went to Poor Things and Oppenheimer. Right. So, four things was best makeup and hair, best costume, best production design, and Emma Stone for best actress. And then Oppenheimer was best editing, best cinematography, score, Robert Downey Jr. as supporting actor, Killian Murphy as actor, Nolan as the director, and best picture. So, big, most most of the biggest awards all went to Oppenheimer. And yeah. Not, not a huge, not a huge upset, but. I uh, in in our house here we were definitely uh, I knew we were going to be disappointed because Barbie was the the movie of the year for us um it was the experience of of the year for us and the writing was on the wall I felt like you know it, it was obviously going to be snubbed for pretty much everything except maybe song 
So I was happy to see the song won, but Ryan Gosling's performance made the night for me. <laughs> like it was, it was the best thing I've seen in uh, on the Oscars in a positive yeah, yeah. way for a long time. And uh, I, it was just amazing. It was amazingly thought out, not just performed, but the the basing it on the Marilyn Monroe famous performance. Yeah, he put I, a lot of work into that. He really did. He really did. And uh, so, so good on him um, because I, I, I just thought it was amazing. Uh, that, that was my only thing was I was like, you know, I know Oppenheimer's probably going to win most of this stuff, but, but it sure would be nice to see Barbie win a little something more, but, but uh, I guess yeah. they'll have to console themselves with making the most money of any movie. I mean, if, if you can, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's a good show. Good show. Did you see any movies lately? Not much. Uh, mostly what I've been watching is going to be TV, but um, I did uh, just the other night sat down and watched uh, Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom, the second one. Hadn't seen it. Um, surprisingly, I hadn't seen it yet. And it's on HBO for streaming right now. And uh, so it was like 10 o'clock at night. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do it. Bit longer than I expected, but yeah, not great. Um, ho hum at best. There were things. <laughs> I, I was just, I knew I was going to be disappointed in, in the plot and the storyline. Um, you really enjoyed the first one. That was most, I did. You know, a, lot of, a lot of people did. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and they just it, it felt mostly like I think I said it felt like a, 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 a recycled Captain Planet plot uh, that cartoon from the nineties. <laughs> but I mean, there was stuff. I, I think Black Mana is super cool. Um, I loved his henchman and his sub and it, that, that just all felt very comic booky, old comic booky. And, and I thought that was amazing. He should have been the main bad guy. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, the costume still looks cool to me, even though it's Jason Momoa, I would have chose somebody else, but whatever that we're way past that. Um, but I, I was glad they didn't change it for the entire movie that that was his main costume, the traditional look as it, I feel it should be had storm the seahorse, which was, you know, such a throwback fun, super friends thing for, for me. Um, so I liked all of that stuff, but yeah, I just, it just didn't have the courage to do the story. I, I thought it should tell. And, And I knew they, I had hope, I had all this hope, but I knew when there wasn't a bunch of backlash about, how dare you do that? Or, you know, I was like, uh, no hook hand. I don't know if I'm feeling it. (laughs) Uh, we needed a, we needed a third movie to get, to get to the hook hand. We're never going to get it. (laughs) Not going to happen. Not going to happen. So yeah. Yeah. It just, to me, it felt like a lot of cliches of that. Oh, an ancient prophecy and a, Mm -hmm. you know, the King must wield the trident and all, you know, but it just felt very, every fantasy movie, Every sci-fi movie, like, you know, the villain, yeah, whatever. It kind of, all the Snyder films, you know, the DC films kind of all had plots that way. It was just like, I don't know. It's not my favorite. Felt like there were, there were better things they could have used, so. And again, they were a little bit hamstrung being like, oh, here's the last movie of this whole yeah. iteration of films. It's not good. <laughs> you can't set up anything. Mm-mm. You can't, you know, all you got to do is just kind of pay it off what you can. And then your entire audience already knows this is the end. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but, but yeah, it's not something I'll probably revisit uh, in the future. The only movie news I had was the big news just dropped. We got a silver surfer. <laughs> a Fantastic Four movie, and it's Julia Garner. You might know from Ozarks. Mm-hmm. But before that, she was in The Americans. I think she's won Emmys. She's a very good actress. Yeah. Just one flaw: she's a lady. Oh. People don't like a lady silver. <laughs> Odin don't like a lady silver server. That we know. We all know that. <laughs> 
so the the hyperbole has already begun. That this is the end of the MCU. <laughs> Throw it in the dirt. It's over. I think she's a great actress, and they said she's playing Shala Ball, who is the wife of the original Silver Surfer. So it's some other, mm. you know. Yeah. That's some okay. Other. We're gonna gender swap the character, but she's playing an established Marvel character. But whatever. Yeah, I still, I, 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 I still feel like this movie's gonna can be great. I really do. I I love the '60s vibe, and we we've talked about yeah, it's been done okay, sure, but but not not in this universe it hasn't. So I don't know. I think it'll still be cool. I like the cast. I I, I still have a lot. You know, they keep pushing out these these retro posters. We got the four four on uh, April the fourth. We got the uh, the Human Torch throwback uh, poster, and I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. I'm I'm here for it. And who knows, she might not even she might be in five minutes of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have no idea. Could what, be a total afterthought. What the plot is. Yeah, could be. So, I mean, honestly, can it be? Can it be much worse than the Silver Surfer? They did in Fantastic <laughs> in the second Fantastic Four movie. I mean, do we really think it's going to be worse than that? I have been having a thought to go back and rewatch all that stuff before Deadpool comes out. Mm, to watch yeah. all the pre-MCU the movies, yeah. Daredevil, Elektra, the Punisher movie. Like, part of me wants to this summer spend this summer rewatching all that old stuff because I have not revisited it in a long time. <laughs> so I, I would, yeah. I don't know if I can't talk myself out of it. That may be my next movie project. <laughs> I, I, well, yeah, I like that. I, I also think they might be banking on that part of it. Like, oh, everybody, it's been so long. Everybody will just have nostalgia for it. They won't really care that they were, you know, the best movies at this point. So we're bringing back their childhood. And I get that. Sure. Uh, you know, but. All right. Speaking of bringing back childhood, let's go to TV. Oh. You've just crossed over into the twilight zone. Live from New York, it's Saturday night. <laughs> I'm Prison Mike. You know why they call me Prison Mike? <laughs> Davis, please sit down. Are you threatening me? I am Cornholio. First sign of youngsters going wrong, you got to nip it in the bud. Nip it. And I'm sitting there with Woody, and uh, I say, I turn to him and I go, uh, boy, these pretzels are making me thirsty. Picture it, Sicily, 1939. What are you talking about, Willis? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Good afternoon, everybody. No! X-Men 97 has debuted on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> oh were, you, my God. were you an X-Men guy? Were you Fox Kids uh, viewer back then? I, I was. I did. An, I enjoyed uh, the original series very much when it when it was on. So, yeah. I mean, I just thought it was a cool cartoon. I, I don't, you know, wasn't... <clears throat> I was a little bit older. I was more the G.I. Joe, Transformers, He-Man, you know, age, but... But when this this was a better cartoon that came out, um, you know, I think it was in junior high, um, but it was on after school. So, yeah, I, I totally watched it and, and thought it was really good. And, and for that time period, the storylines were very, um, you know, comic centric and, and and they didn't treat kids like idiots or, or you know, wasn't just silliness on 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 your TV, so that was pretty yeah, cool. I was, I would have been 12-ish when it debuted, so yeah. 13, 14 as it's going on. And I, I was curious about this new iteration. I, I was inter- I hadn't watched the old stuff since then. I never went back and rewatched it. I definitely had nostalgia for it. Saw the trailer, thought, oh, this could be pretty good. Then I watched it, and I was so, I, it hit me so hard. Yeah. 
like a wave hit me of like, holy crap. And it just made me think like that show without exaggeration was the most significant TV show of my life. Mm. That show in the early nineties, I was a baseball card collector. Yeah. I had comics. I read comics, but that show made me want comics. Made me Mm. like, I want to buy more comics and literally has impacted the rest of my life. It like my career, my entire life reading comics, yeah. like could be traced back to that show getting me so into the X-Men that I was like, I need more of this. I need where I need to go to the store and find more of this stuff. So I, I, I don't know. Something hit me of like, wow, that show literally set the course of my life and it, mm. without, without yeah. any exaggeration. Like, wow, that that's crazy. That makes sense. It, to just revisit it now as a middle-aged man being like, wow, okay. <laughs> this is where it all started. And yeah, I, I here, had... I, here I am back at it. <laughs> so yeah, I had some kind of reaction to it. So I, I don't, again, I, we've said things before. Like I, I don't have, I don't have a way of judging it objectively, whether it's a good show or a bad show, but I, I liked it. I think it's, it was really well made. Yeah. The voices were familiar, even, you know, I'm sure there's some, that didn't reprise the roles or whatever, but everything just felt like it was transported right from the nineties to today. Yeah. I, and I, I don't think, I mean, they're sure. Nostalgia is going to be, you know, depending on the individual person, but I mean, I thought the show was great. It felt very, very from its time, but yet so relevant in today's world i mean that first episode i'm like oh yeah there's the january 6 people you know <laughs> we're fighting them like i don't know i just it did it just felt very relevant still today and the storylines they picked up and, and good you know and yet yeah, it's coming from the comics you know magneto's there in his in his new outfit from from back then and i just yeah it definitely has the winks and nods like the trial of Magneto with him in chains was taken directly from a cover. Yeah. The wedding photo of Scott and Jean was taken from X-Men 30. Like that was the exact cover from there. We had Madeline Pryor and Inferno <laughs> a Mojo. Like, yeah. yeah, they're just bringing, they're bringing very specific plot points back. Although my two least favorite villains in all comics are Mojo and Mr. Sinister. I've, <laughs> ne- I've always thought they were super lame, and those have been the first two villains they've, they've had yeah. on this show, and it's like, I'm still liking it, even though I do not like these characters. Right, right. Which says something, you know. There's something you know, something to be said for that. So, yeah, I, I just think it's great. I love that they did it. I, I was super worried because right before it debuted, there it came on, you know, the, the show runner or creator or of the new one that had left or was fired or something or other, whatever happened, I was like, Oh God, this is not going to be good. We're going to be in for a huge disappointment. And everybody's all the fanboys are going to be so pissed because it's not good. And, and they had such high expectations, but no, I think it's been absolutely great. I love, you know, having the traditional theme come on there, just updating it. You know, they didn't change it much. They just updated a little bit and things that, didn't make sense have been corrected and uh yeah super 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 worth the time um i'm loving like again fairly kid friendly but also kind of complex like the original cartoon was complex it had like plot lines that lasted for a long time so like this most recent episode we saw was you know silly jubilee gets trapped (laughs) in a video game but then the second part was storm and forge adapting yeah. the life death story and it's like it was very powerful of like someone mm-hmm. who had lost who had something and had lost it and like forge's history of like what had you know had he sacrificed his his you know integrity you know it was like wow this was this felt like a soap opera or something, you know which again <laughs> the x-men comics were very soap opera for a long time yeah it um yeah i mean that's just a i love cartoons and animation and all that stuff obviously but man we've been getting some really good anime or cartoons back um riding that wave of nostalgia sure but but man i I mean there's really good stuff out there today that i feel like is uh, the you know the people that originally watched it uh, uh, we've 
you know, rediscovered it, but I kind of wish more the younger people, cause I don't, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just haven't been around the right younger people, but I kind of wish they would discover it a little bit more and really get into it. Um, because just as a person that grew up on, on GI Joe life lessons and he man, you know, at the end of the, every episode, they're going to explain to the, the, the lesson to you. So, um, as somebody that grew up on Mr. Rogers and Sesame street, you know, the, the, have empathy for people and, and learn things from these shows is, is, is just so important. Well, the kids today like invincible and you're not getting like, <laughs> you're not getting Mr. Rogers in yeah, from that. That's for sure. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I had it on yesterday. My wife, I forget who, if it was Alicia or Carly. One of them goes, why is there so much gore and cussing on this cartoon show <laughs> and i was like robert kirkman baby <laughs> so we just wrapped up season two uh, on prime the invincible animated adaptation of the image comic book i thought season two started a little slower like this first that first season every episode was a new concept a new villain a new yeah. like it moves so fast and so and like the second one slowed way down, but then these last mm. few episodes I think picked it up a lot more. So it really paid off. So I, I, I yeah. thought season two ended very, very strongly. All, all bangers. Yes. <laughs> well, season one and two for me. Yeah, I, I um, this is I, I have no, no history with this character or the com the original comic book. I all I knew was uh, if you showed me a picture of, of that guy of of Mark and back, you know, from a comic book, I would have said, Hey, that's invincible. I know nothing more than that. Yeah. And, uh, never read a page of it. And I think it is absolutely wonderful. This, this show is, you know, it's adult. Sure. But man, it is just, it's been done so well. <laughs> Even it all those, it takes all those familiar bits. Yes. Like comic book, super friends type stuff. And then just, turns them you know not just make them r-rated but like matures them and makes them yes you know, takes the concepts like oh there's an invent there's an you know an immortal guy right. what would his you know, his life would kind of suck you know yeah. so it's him dealing with grief and all the loss he's had and and mark you know he's the son of this most powerful being on the planet and it's him he, he doesn't want to become his dad and he's you know he's seeing is he going to follow his mom's path or his dad's path so yeah it's just it's it's really well made and complex in the right ways, but also kind of goofy and like yeah, the, the, through the multiverse this last episode and had <laughs> some good jokes and stuff. So it's, it's yeah. funny as well as super violent and action packed, but even making fun of itself, you know, about uh, everybody criticized the, the gap, you know, of real time in between the episodes, <laughs> but then even, you know, making jokes about the animation. Oh, you know, right. Sometimes shows, you know, we cover people's mouths so we don't have to animate it and it's cheaper and costs less money. I was just like, this is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, Amazon Prime, man, totally worth it. I love the uh, that one-off episode they did with Adam Eve. Like, she's a great character. It's just, yeah, it's so complex with um, treating these characters, uh, you know, as as real people that just happen to have uh have superpowers or weird things um so and, and how the world works it's just so good so very happy with my tv watching here lately with the superhero stuff got a couple uh well as i'll say a couple things that we've had apple plus here um lately and a couple shows on there they were pretty good. Um, my my wife was really getting, uh, really got into them. And uh, first one we we had watched uh, Maya Rudolph. She has a Maya Rudolph has a show on there called Loot, and it's about this ultra rich couple, um, that you know tech money type thing. The dude and uh, uh, they end up uh, splitting up, and uh, she has no skills. More or less, you know, she just married a rich guy or married a guy that got rich and had uh, were, were billionaires. And and uh, it's kind of a sweet story. Uh, it's got Ron Funches in it. Um, love him. 
And it's just about, uh, she takes over one of her chair, starts working at one of her charity organizations that exists and she comes in and how she can help with it. It's really sweet story. Um, done very, it's funny, uh, good cast in it. The other one, a newer show that just came out, um, Palm, Palm Springs, I, I think it's called, or Palm Coast, maybe Palm, ah, I have to look it up. Um, but this is the, uh, Chris, Kristen Wiig. Uh, new show. It's a period piece um, set in the uh, in in the sixties. Um, again, about rich people. Um, she's not a rich person, but but uh, she wants to get into. Uh, she has a famous rich relative through her her husband, Palm Royale. Palm Royale. There we go. Um, the the costuming is amazing. First of all, <laughs> the hair, the outfits. I mean, they are spectacular uh, uh, of the era. And then, um, yeah, she's trying to get into this rich woman's country club, rich people club, and uh, just on name alone and scamming her way into it. It's really neat. It's, it's, it's very intelligently funny um, writing throughout the series. It's got a great cast. And... Uh, We've really been enjoying that one. Um, I have not finished it yet, but uh, but certainly will. Um, and I know Alicia would highly recommend that. It's it's a it's a really good show for couples. Um, you know, just to to watch. I like Kristen Wiig and to watch her try and and find a way out, um, not having money and living in this in this world of money and fame, and they're all backbiting and and grabbing for power and it's all you know all about the debutantes and and the the big balls and events they have fundraisers and and that's how they keep their money um more or less so uh very interesting um not not quite in the fun poor genre it's more the definitely not fun poor we need we need to come up with a word or a, <laughs> a, a genre for that um, cuz that's definitely every show coming out nowadays is about yeah how terrible rich people yeah it's like bad rich um or something so (laughs) (laughs) definitely not fun for so carly is not watching it it's not up her alley (laughs) but those are both on apple plus um good shows apple plus doesn't have a lot of shows but but generally speaking the shows on there are pretty good i feel like they put some money into them so you got some bigger stars for the most part So what do you what do you got? Anything else? Uh, not much. I've been checking out the Shogun, the mini series on FX, and then the next mm. day on Hulu. That was a mini series back in the eighties, based on the James Clavell novel. And they've updated it with a bigger budget, and uh, so I watched the first one. And liked it. And then I realized, wait, I have the book on my bookshelf. I bought it at like a library used book sale 15 years ago. But it's 1,200 pages. And I just never, I was never, like, I wanted to read it. I was curious. Oh, that's like one one and a half Masters of the Universe books. (laughs) (laughs) And way fewer pictures. Right. (laughs) So, so like, I'm like, if I don't read that book now when this show is on, I'm never going to read it. So I started to read it. I'm like, well, I'll just kind of read up to the next episode. And then mm-hmm. what? So I, I've never done that before. What read like read? I either read the book and then watch the show, or vice versa. So I'm trying to read and then watch the episode. And it's good. It's it's really interesting. It's very complex. I I, I don't read those sorts of books like you know, the yeah. Game of Thrones, you know, the big epic thick you know yeah. family. This family is feuding with this family and the dynasty of that like. There's a lot going on, a lot, a big cast. It spans hundreds of years. You know, you, you learn all this mm. history and stuff. And that's not normally my jam, but I, I've been enjoying it well enough. And then, so I'm like three episodes in and about 500 pages into the book. And I'm not wow. halfway done. So, yeah, it's uh, wow. That's been occupying plenty of my time recently. But yeah, it's really I... well made. The acting is, is great. A lot of subtitles because it's, mm. it's in Japanese for the most part. I got there's one. English uh, ship captain who gets stranded in feudal Japan and it's kind of fish out of water, like him learning their ways. And Hmm. again, very complex, you know, 
politics and this, you know, this person's against that person, but they can't, you know, they have to ally themselves with this person. So yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot going on, but it's really entertaining. Hmm. Yeah. I have, um, haven't got into that yet. I, I keep seeing it pop up on my, you know, on my Hulu account over and over and over, but I'm just like, Oh, Jordan's reading 1200 page books. I can't even read the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oh yeah. So yeah, probably the only other thing I might, you know, that might be relevant, uh, this episode coming out, uh, very briefly, I have started watching the, the very much talked about, uh, quiet on set. Um, about the the 90s Nickelodeon Dan Schneider um child uh molestations and and nastiness um terrible things that happened and uh these young kid well they were young kid actors now they're adults but have come forward and talk about their experiences and uh, that they had and and um I don't know I I mean you've watched a little bit uh, uh, yes, that was the that was a little after my time. That was the Zach and Cody era. Yeah, me too. I, you know, I, I had watched. I, I'm in the Clarissa era, so it was a little different. I do remember watching all of that when it first premiered, the the sketch comedy show. I'm thinking because yeah. I I liked Keenan and Kel. I thought they were good, and I remember Amanda Bynes coming on the show as like this super young kid who was really funny and like saying wow she's super talented you know yeah not everyone on nickelodeon was the best actor but <laughs> so it was yeah i do i have memory of that of like knowing amanda Bynes as this very young kid being like wow she's gonna have a great career and then it never yeah. like, working out that way but so yeah i don't know these people they're interviewing or or they're the, the shows very well that they're talking about but it's still it's kind of disturbing and a little yeah a little creepy but yeah, definitely creepy. I haven't watched. I, I've watched about two, the first two and a half episodes. I, I I haven't gotten any. They were just getting into kind of Drake Bell and his interview and talking coming forward his history through Nickelodeon. It was where it kind of stopped for now. Um, Carly and I it had it had come out and we we didn't have HBO there and then we got HBO again just this week and. Um, Cause we had taken a little break, um, from that, that cost. But, uh, I, I said something to her about it and, and she has actually been rewatching like old Drake and Josh, Josh episodes, uh, here for a little while. And like, that's her childhood, you know, that that's my kid's stuff. Yeah. And I was never big Nickelodeon watcher anyways. I mean, I watched some when, especially when I was younger, but, but, Probably by the middle school age, I I don't know. I just didn't watch that much of it. So, you know, I, we, we had this conversation, and and she was like, pretty much said, I don't, I you know, I don't think I want to watch it, um, and and have it ruin my childhood, um, <laughs> which you know I can respect that. But then she came home the a uh, couple nights ago, and I had it on, and. She was like, "You're." I thought you were gonna watch it. And I was like, "Well, you were home." <laughs> so, so, um, it, yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, terrible. Um, it, it, you know, as far as the production itself, it's fine. Um, I do. I don't know. I, it, it definitely the the people that made this, um, the journalist definitely had an intention. I feel like the way it's presented. Because there are certain things that are shown or they talk about and then they show the clip and I'm just kind of like, yeah, I I see what you're saying, but I'm not, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird to lump it all in together where there's this powerful TV producer who's the boss who, you know, has a reputation, you know, treats the female writers worse than the male writers. Right. And is a little inappropriate around the kids. And he's just kind of a creep. Yeah. And then there are actual predators who are, you know. Yes. Bringing kids to amusement parks and 
right. you know, Mr. Dudley or whatever. <laughs> it's like yes. buying him hot dogs at a baseball game. Yes. The so bicycle like, man himself. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So there are two different things and they're kind of equating it all as one thing. Like Nickelodeon was bad. Yeah. It had a boss who was mean and child predator. So it's like, that's kind of the, the scale's a little different. There. That, so that's... I'm, they're, they're all bad. Right. But some are, you know, irredeemable. Yeah. Some are monstrous. Others are just, yeah. oh, there's yeah. that creep, creep guy I know, you know. So yeah, definitely don't get around him or be too friendly, you know keep your distance type of thing but yeah that's that's the impression i pretty much have gotten out of it so far so it's all terrible um what what you know everything that happened so but i'm also of the uh, of the mind of i don't i don't need anybody protected I, even if i was a huge fan of this guy and his shows yeah drag him out in the light I, if he was a creep get, you know he needs to suffer whatever consequences <laughs> yes so. yes yeah, so and I, I'm I, I don't know exactly, you know, they they give a couple little quotes during the during the episodes of uh, the statements Nickelodeon had put out and I'm not sure you know, they don't come off real great. Um but I also know like the head of Nickelodeon was on also on he was buddies with Dan Schneider and they were on head of the class together and I was like I didn't even know that. Like that you know, I had no idea that the the punky the punk rock guy from head of the class was also ended up being somebody too on on the damn network so yeah i don't know had to bring it up it's definitely been talk of <laughs> talk of the internet well that was the whole thing i probably would have completely not watched it had it not been for tiktok and just when that thing came out like for three days that's all i saw were tiktoks and commentary about people watching these episodes as they had come out and and all the terrible things and and all of that and i was just like wow this okay this is, seems very relevant uh, this is what's happening right now so <laughs> Although that does tie into the other news that was going on this week, which Seth probably could have talked a little bit more to this because he had actually met the guy, but um, Ed Pisker committed suicide. Comic book artist from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, famous for Hip Hop Family Tree. He traced like the history of hip hop back in the old old days. And he did X-Men Grand Design. So a very stylish cartoonist and also the co-host uh, cartoonist kayfabe which was a, a mm. youtube channel that was hugely popular hugely influential had lots of big name guest stars and stuff so they like he's probably more famous for his commentary you know talking about comics and how much he loved comics um so just a couple weeks ago stories were breaking some me too type stories that he had had some inappropriate texts mm. with a 17 year old girl and they brought it to light that he's some other things that, you know, inappropriate uh, <laughs> yeah. interactions and relationships with female either fans or other people in the industry. And the scandal broke and like within a week he killed himself. So wow. he and he wrote this very long suicide note. This was like a Google Doc that people were emailing around like everyone has access to this. He was very methodical. And he named names of, you know, how, how crushed he was, the, the internet bullying that destroyed his life and ended his career because he had a big art show that was just about to debut in Pittsburgh of his art. And the, these allegations came up and it got canceled. Yeah. So I'm sure he felt like his, you know, he would never recover his reputation or his career or whatever. And his co host ended the podcast, he ended mm. their professional relationship. So, like, I'm sure he felt alone. So, there is something to be said for the internet mob. Yeah, sure. And attack the way we attack people, guilty or not guilty, before you know, we don't know the facts, we never will on any of this allegations right. and stuff. So, you know, it these are people's lives we're dealing with. And again, I don't know, innocent or guilty, whether you think it's justified or not, I don't know, but it's I don't know, it's a little it's a little scary and it's beyond cancel culture. It's beyond, you know, it's that right that mentality of like this person did wrong. We must <laughs> sink our teeth in as much as we can, as fast as we can. Yeah. I was, uh, there was a guy, uh, works in the same building I do. And we were having a conversation, I don't know, a few weeks ago, just kind of in passing about, 
you know, Mike Tyson having this big fight with uh, with uh, Jake Paul or whatever that's coming out. 57-year-old Mike Tyson. Everybody's like, oh, you know, really excited about it. And Mike Tyson's going to, you know, he's going to kill this kid or whatever. And he that kid deserves it. And he won't, he's so stupid for fighting Mike Tyson. But I'm like, I said, Mike Tyson... Do we, how easily we've, we've forgotten because, you know, maybe it was before cancel culture and all this stuff. Mike Tyson did some pretty bad stuff or was accused of doing some pretty bad stuff. And I'm like, you know, uh, he's, he's had a long road back, um, uh, to, you know, to, to kind of regain his celebrity, I guess. But, uh, but yeah, I'm just like, yeah, he, he, he may have been lucky when he did those bad things, uh, you know, wasn't the culture of today and, and he wasn't, you know, eviscerated for it. So as, as I, I was talking thing. to somebody in the shop this week about, Ed, and it was like, this is also new. We don't know how to deal with this stuff. And if you are accused of something yeah, and the internet mob gangs up on you, I can see how it would feel hopeless. Sure. We haven't, this hasn't, these conditions haven't existed long enough with social media and all this stuff to, to know what's on the other side of that. Yeah. You know, are, can you resurrect your career 20 years from now and like look back and okay, I made mistakes as a younger person, but blah, blah, blah. So we don't know. Like we're yeah. still in the midst of learning how to yeah. judge this stuff. And this how, is, you know, the vi- villagers with the, you know, right. forks and, <laughs> right. And torches <laughs> at this point. So, but yeah. again, like those people never got caught in the past. This all happened right. in Hollywood you know, bands and musicians and agents and, you know, this all happened for decades. Anything we ever found out about, you know, they were either long dead or so elderly that, you know, yeah. So yeah, there've always been scandals in celebrity culture, but like we're, we've just hit a new epoch right now of like knowing every detail, getting text, you know, text messages. We get the, the screenshots of all this stuff or video or, yeah. Like again, we're we're just in a new uncharted territory of how do you even deal with this stuff? And if you aren't guilty, how do you how protest do you... your innocence? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because but if you are immediate... guilty, we immediately What believe. do you deserve? Yeah. 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 The minute anything comes out, we're like everybody the society is a oh my god, you know, we immediately believe whatever it is. So, that's you know, there're people out there that still think celebrities drink baby blood and and right. all this nonsense. When people believe that, they'll believe anything. So, and, and a lot of this stuff, like it's even if it's not a crime, even if it's just a bad look or a bad, you know, yeah, oh, you shouldn't have treated someone that way. That's even stickier. Of like, that's such a gray area. Of like, well, we're all people. I don't know, yeah, did, <laughs> did they just get caught? Does everyone yeah. do it? And just this one person got caught. So like, w- yeah. Or is it that they need to be made an example of so it doesn't happen to other people? Like it's it's such a difficult waters to navigate, but it, it is sad we lost a very talented creator over you know what I, you know, it was his own his own doing. So that's right. that's just a sad sad state. There's no winners. There's no winners in any. Exactly. Exactly. Well, um, maybe we'll end with this. Uh, speaking of no winners. Yeah, but... I was digging, trying to find a way out. Thank you. <laughs> no winners. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some Disney news that's come out. Um, we haven't talked about this stuff in a while, but basically some stuff that's been happening behind the scenes. Um, there, there, this Tryon group uh, led by... Uh, Guy, an old guy, um, but I think it's Nelson Peltz. Um, I keep I keep seeing headlines about this stuff. I'm like, this is all too complicated. I'll, I'll just yeah. let Cliff explain it. To yeah. You. So my now, give me a little room here because this I have not. Uh, I've kind of been not paying very well, very good attention to this, and just kind of gathering pieces as it goes on. But basically, all of Ike Perlmutter. 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 Real life supervillain. Um, long history with this show. We've talked about Ike for years now, almost all the way back to the beginning. But basically, all Ike's he gave his shares to this dude. 
and and, a, and he's been more as or less like a, a proxy as a proxy to, yes to do what he wanted on the board even though he's not to on get board. on the board that was yeah. the goal to take over disney's board of directors so they could take over the you know hostile takeover of the company um so then they could do with it basically what they want more or less so um it's been it's been ongoing for months and months and months and finally, um, that the shareholder meeting was this week and they, they grabbed old Ike Perlmutter and, and Pelts and the whole group and just threw them out the door, uh, onto their, uh, their rich butts. So Perlmutter, Perlmutter. um, once again, they've been defeated. Uh, thank God. And, uh, you know, there's a bad rich sitcom I want to watch. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love Perlmutter. Perlmutter. <laughs> Life with Ike. Um, yeah. So, so this has all been ongoing and finally we got a little, at least for now, Hopefully this will be the end of it. They're all like 90 years old, but I, I, you know, I get it. I don't agree with everything the company does. I never will. You know, I don't think Bob Iger is the best dude ever and the perfect leader and all this stuff, but he's done some good stuff. Um, you know, I, the, the things have, have not been great. The movies haven't, you know, made a bunch of money and that's all stuff that's very, interesting to investors. I'm not an investor. I don't give two shits about their bottom line for the most part. As long as they're still in business and running theme parks, I'm a happy guy, you know, make a cartoon, make an animated movie every once in a while and with a good story and you got me. That's all I need. But this is all about making money. And this dude, his, his long history with taking over companies, um, piecing them out, selling off anything for parts that he could and, you know, to make more money for investors and himself and then walking away and he's done, um, destroy it, walk away. And, you know, you get your, your, your big payout. That's all they care about. So, um, so anyways, that that's been happening on top of this whole Reedy Creek, Florida tourism board of improvement or whatever the hell they call it. Now, um, we, we had talked about several, quite a while back, but the fight between Disney as a company and the state of Florida and Ron DeSantis, that he's made this big spectacle and took away Reedy Creek. And that's just been a a barrage of lawsuits back and forth, just suing each other, um, over power. That that's the bottom line. Uh, Does Disney get to do what they want, spend their money as they want, um, keep their own, roads and, and emergency services, um, which they've done a great job with, um, drive around Florida and then go to the area on Disney property. And I'm telling you right now, the conditions of the roads, the sidewalks, the grounds are, are night and day. So, I mean, for that purpose, it's been great, but finally, um, this week, you know, DeSantis has dropped out of the presidential race a while ago. And as many people speculated, it was just politicizing, you know, a culture war, um, over, over nothing, you know, woke Disney. I mean, come on. Freaking Disney has never been woke. Um, no, no corporation. Right. (laughs) Corporation is, you know, they don't put woke agendas ahead of online consideration. It does not exist. Um, so simply because Disney has a history of, of um, uh, what they call gay days going back to, I think, the 80s and 90s, um, one day a year that, you know, it was basically uh, pride in the parks. Um, and and Which was marketing to get set to sell tickets. Yes, like, to make money. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what it was. Um, but, you know, again, culture wars. Um, how dare they? Uh, so anyways... The news story is they have basically called a truce. Lawsuits have been dropped. They've come into agreement. There are new, um, there have been new board members appointed. Um, 
because DeSantis appoints these, the state appoints these board members to this uh, Reedy Creek, uh, as it used to be known. So they have some new blood in there um, that are maybe not as terrible as the, the last bunch that's in there. But basically, Disney is moving forward, um, building, looking at expanding their parks. And uh, the state of Florida gets mo- makes money off of that because Disney is the biggest employer employer in the state, and, uh, and and of course the tourism and all the money that people come to Florida and spend their money at. So it was a uh, you know unfortunately um, a lot a lot of nonsense um, that just prevented progress for a couple years so or four years or however long it's been. Um, so yeah. Uh, no winners, but, but certainly, um, you know, maybe, maybe not a, a, a defined loser either in, in those battles. So Iger's still here. Disney's still here as a, as a, uh, existing company. They're not looking at, at selling off and pe- being pieced out for parts. And, uh, in fact, we're, we're probably going to get a few new things that have been announced. So yay. Pearl Mutter rides off into the sunset. I'll get you next time, Iger. Pearl Mutter. So, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> That's all I got. All right, there we go. That's an episode. Sure. Put that in the bank. Thank you for listening, everyone. <laughs> yes. Seth doesn't like it when we end the show by mm-hmm. like promoting ourselves and asking people to like and comment and he, he does patron not. and yeah so we can do it as long as we want That's right tonight. we can promote it all <laughs> go to asylum okay. comics in marietta ohio um it did not get flooded uh no, it's still dry. dry all our books are dry That's right. and dry. <laughs> uh yeah join the patreon and only it starts at a dollar a month um you get extra stuff you get early episodes um Still working on some other projects for that upcoming, hopefully. Um, I've got a new, it, it probably might sound a little different this week. I'm back in the house. I didn't, we didn't talk about it. I'm back in the house. I got a new setup. Um, what used to be my daughter's uh, room forever. Uh, she has moved on to bigger rooms after her brother moved out. And uh, this was my wife's office the last uh, couple of years. And uh, I decided, we we decided that we, we, could get more use out of it. Um, I've had all my podcast studio stuff out in the laundry room in the back of the garage for, um, I guess since, I don't know what, sometime in 2020, um, something like that, 2021, something like that. So I've been working out there, whether it's hot or it's cold or whatever, you know, I was suffering through it, but, but now we're, we're climate controlled. I've got a new desk. That's very cool. We have a, a, a setup here. We've got a, audio equipment my wife's got a new microphone she's got set up over there um got some new stuff and uh yeah it's a work in progress but it's looking pretty cool i got some star wars in here i got a big return of the jedi poster i got a lightsaber yeah check that out so um yeah cool stuff all right, that's what we got cooking from your friends at KPP. And we'll be back with more sooner rather than later. My name is Jordan Lowe. And I'm Cliff Barnes. Goodbye forever. Little loggers are lumbermen. Got their pets and tools with them. Ranger Rick's got to move the log down river. Chuck the beaver can help. It's Kenner's new little loggers. You can fill them with water. Floating logs every way. Yeah, floating water when you play. <laughs> you can collect Jumper Joe with Rocky Raccoon, too. Timber! Little loggers. Ranger Rick with Chops the Beaver. Jumper Joe with Rocky Raccoon. Each set sold separately. New from Kenner. Kapow! The Pop Cultured Podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Sounds, music, and clips played during the podcast are property of copyright holders. 
All original content is property of www.udanwithkpp.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave a comment. Kapow! The Pop Cultured Podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, and wherever podcasts can be found. You can connect with us through social media on Facebook, YouTube, at The Kapow Podcast on Twitter, or email the show Kapow, the Pop Culture Podcast at gmail.com. If you really want to go the extra mile, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash KPP for special content and access to Patreon-only benefits. We are grateful for anyone who chooses to contribute, but please know that most of our content will remain free. So please continue to like, comment, and share.